William Dotson, 18, beaten, broken, nailed to a cross. The unsolved murder and grisly crucifixion has terrified the residents of Topanga Canyon, a rugged, sparsely populated part of Los Angeles that was once home to Charles Manson and his cult. Now, six weeks after the murder, police say Colin Clark, 17, is their prime suspect. He was a classmate of the dead boy. Clark has been described as a strange loner by neighbor D.M. Eckstein, owner of the property where the body was found. It's horrible. They found the boy on my property. People are scared. Moments ago, attorney Ron Trott arrived at the Clark home, which tells me charges against Colin are imminent. No word yet on how police came to focus on Clark, but the detectives I've spoken to are very confident they have their man. A crime this bad is guaranteed to produce two things, media coverage and pressure on the police to arrest somebody fast. Should have hired us sooner. I didn't think we needed a lawyer. The police told us Colin wasn't a suspect. They lied. Don't worry, we will handle this. Clark has a prior arrest for spray painting pentagrams like the ones found at the crime scene. A juvenile prior arrest. She's not supposed to mention it by law. She's not even allowed to name him as a suspect because he's a minor. She's going to pay for this. This is Alden Tuller, one of my partners, and Betsy Harrison, ex LAPD, our firm's investigator. They're coming with warrants a search warrant for here and an arrest warrant for Colin. Oh my God. It's a probable cause. The warrant says he confessed. When? I never confess. Not just confess. The police say you bragged about killing Dodson because you hated him. I did hate him. He beat the hell out of me a few months ago. He broke my arm. William was a jerk, but I didn't kill him. I should have gotten him out of here. Should have gotten to Mexico the minute we saw the news. No, I don't need to run away, Dad. I didn't do anything wrong. How could you even think Colin could be capable of something like this? I didn't say he did it, Deb. But look at the news. How's he gonna get a fair trial out of this? I'm just trying to protect him. If Colin went on the run, we'd never see him again, Jack. No one is running anywhere. Are the police gonna find anything we need to know about? Here they come. Oh, God, I'm gonna be sick. Alden, look at him. We've gotta clean him up. Hold on. You playing games, ABA killer? He told his parents Colin wasn't a suspect. Things changed, Luther. Look at you. You used to be a DA, now you're just another defense lawyer. Nobody goes inside that house until I see a valid search warrant. Take your time, Tom. We've got press watching. I want people to see you obstructing the investigation. Lawyers for the Clark family, they're invoking their rights to remain silent. Understand? Teacher, those are my school supplies and my, my students' drawings. Deb, don't talk. If my kids ever put anything like this on the walls, I'm kicking them out of the house. That's not good. When Keller sees that, he's gonna make his day end his case. He already knows about it. Listed on the search warrant as part of the probable cause to arrest Colin. What about the confession? Did it say who we confessed to? Uh, an anonymous source. That's helpful. I could get a conviction just by showing the jury this room. The kid's got bad taste. That's your case? It's pathetic. You've got no witnesses and no murder weapon, and I don't buy that he confessed to you. It's on the news, so I know you're feeling the heat to do something. But what's your evidence? See that painting? That's what your client did to William Dodson. They took all my tools. I'm a landscape architect. My guys need those tools. 
The police are about to search Jack's car. Why? Have you been driving my car again? I told you not to. The car's not on the warrant. They're not allowed to search it. The media's out there. If we stop the police, it looks like we're trying to hide something bad. Plus, they'll just get a supplemental warrant and search the car anyway. No, they won't. They already tried it. The judge who signed the warrant struck cars off it. He said they lack probable cause. Is there anything incriminating in the car, Colin? Don't lie. There's nothing. Colin is innocent. Will you please just let Colin answer the question, Deb? I have some spray paint cans in the trunk of the car. They found spray painted pentagrams at the murder scene. Why would I tag next to a body? Well, why not just sign my name? I'm not stupid. Stop talking. Don't let the police search the car. For Lazo, you guys are out of Devonshire Division. Can I give you some advice? Don't touch the car. Your warrant is for the house. The car is outside the scope of the warrant. If you want to be named in a lawsuit, pop the trunk. I promise you will see me again. as much as we could, but they still have photos of what he looked like before. Plus that stuff in his room, it's bad. It makes him look guilty. Yeah. But he's not guilty. He can't be. Yeah. We got a work cut out for us on this one. 100% innocent. If you got the right lawyer with you, we've got the greatest legal system in the world. Jack hit a hammer from the police during the search. What do we do about it? Ethically? You've got no obligation to get the hammer. Or tell the police. We don't even know if it had anything to do with the murder. Clearly Jack thinks it might. Which means he thinks Colin might have murdered William Dodson. What Jack thinks is an evidence. And we don't have to tell the police what he did either. The family is the client. You can't incriminate the client. Okay. Let's not get anyone else involved. I'm not going to tell Ron or Alden what I saw. Okay. Tom. You did nothing wrong. My client is 17 years old. He is a minor. His name should have never even been released to the media. Minor or not, Trot's client will be tried as an adult. Deputy D.A. Keller filed papers this morning transferring the case from juvenile court to superior court. For the record, we're sorry for any pain we may have caused Mr. Trot's client or his family by releasing his name in an earlier broadcast. I love making that woman apologize. So, what's the D.A.'s story? Colin hated William because William was a bully who beat him up. Two months before the murder, William pushed Colin down the stairwell at school in front of 20 witnesses. The fall broke his arm. The DA's story, Colin killed William, is payback. What's our story? This is a witch hunt. Colin was singled out because he's different. But 
Just because he wasn't captain of the baseball team like you doesn't mean he's guilty. Sometimes the different kid is guilty. Colin Bine, Paducah, and way too many others. Appearances aren't always deceiving. Sometimes people are exactly what they look like. So judge a book by its cover, that's what you're saying? I am just trying to see this like a jury will. Colin looks like the kind of kid that could have done it. Plus he's confessed. They say he's confessed, but so far I can't find any confession in the discovery. Keller's a jerk, but he wouldn't make up a confession. We need to find out where this is coming from. Knock out the confession, and he's got nothing. He's got the paintings of crucifixions in Colin's room. Plus Colin was caught tagging pentagrams before. You were at the house, Tom. You heard Colin deny painting the pentagrams at the crime scene. I'm just saying it looks bad for him. Real bad. They must have a theory of how Colin did this. Did the DA take anything that Colin could have used in the crucifixion? No, they didn't take anything. They did find Colin's sneakers. They matched the shoe prints found at the crime scene. I spoke to Colin. He said he used to hike up there. Have Betsy go talk to the neighbor, see if he confirms it. All of you seem to like the kid. You're in charge of him. Tom's trying the case. I'll go talk to Colin's parents. Here are the pictures you asked for. Good. These will help humanize Colin for the jury. Was this Colin's baptism? No, that was his bris. But he had a baptism too. Why? This is a crucifixion case. Colin's religious background is going to be an issue at trial. I'm Catholic. Uh, Deb is Jewish, and we, we didn't want to push Colin, so we let him choose. Maybe that's why he's so screwed up drawing crosses all the time. I know, it's art. He's an artist. Artist sounds weird. We want to present him as a normal kid. Does he have any other hobbies? Yeah, hanging out in his room. I don't know what the hell he's doing there most of the time. And whose fault is that? All you ever do is criticize him. I try to be a good father. Stop it! Trial isn't for months. You need to be strong, united. Jack, we need you on TV saying you know your son never could have killed, let alone crucified anyone. Why not me? Because you're his mother. Mrs. Dahmer probably thought Jeffrey was innocent even after they found a head in his freezer. A mother trusts, a father knows. People believe fathers. Cops took my books, my DVDs, my paintings, half my T-shirts. You'll get everything back as soon as this is over, I promise. The police took a hundred books out of your room. A lot of them were about real crimes and serial killers. I mean, I, I like fiction too. You know, Stephen King, fantasy. What does it matter what I read anyway? The DA is going to say what you read and what you watch paints a picture of who you are. You like dark music, speed metal, goth stuff. The DA will say that your CD collection is the soundtrack of a killer. All your black clothes and your anti-establishment t-shirts make you seem brooding, anti-social. They'll say that you're obsessed with death and violence. All that fits the profile of a killer. The jury will hear two versions of who you are. We have to make sure they believe our version more. Travel Scout stuff like this, this is the kind of thing that fits our story. Mr. Eckstein, you can back up Colin's story that he used to hike up here. I've run Colin off my property more times than I can count. So Colin's shoe prints could have been from before the murder. Did you see him out here the day of the murder? Were you here? No, I wasn't. I've been living in Thousand Oaks during the remodel, but I get up here when I can. The police talk to people who can vouch for me. Yeah, I know, I checked. So, you know Colin? Not really. Jack and Deb are lovely people, but Colin? He does these horrible paintings. Have you seen them? Disgusting. His father hates them, so Colin lets them dry out here on my property. I asked him to keep them in his house. What did he say? He called me and asked. So, I guess you're not going to want to be a character witness. found Colin's confession yet? I mean, are you sure if he even made one? Not yet. We're still going through discovery. Is something wrong? Yeah. I didn't talk to Mr. Trout about this earlier because Deb was there. I can't stop thinking, worrying. He 
saw that I had this hammer. I can't live with this in my house anymore. I want you to test it. See if there's blood in it or whatever. I wish you hadn't just done that. Legally, I could have let the hammer stay where it was. But now, if I test it, and it turns out to be the murder weapon, I have to turn it over to the police. I have to know if Colin killed that boy. I have to know. What the hell is this? Colin didn't tell us he had a website. Carla finally turned over Colin's laptop. Colin tried to delete this, but we've recovered it. See that? That's how Keller got his warrants. It's Colin's confession. I sent William to hell where he belongs, that he cried like a bitch the whole way down. Good riddance. Colin doesn't just look like a killer. He paints and writes like one, too. Why didn't you tell us about this website, Colin? You wrote that you hated William. You and Diablo and this other punk MFD joked about how you killed William. Why the hell would you do that? I didn't mean any of it. Well, then why write it? They were stupid. But I was just screwing around. I mean, that's what you do on the internet. You, you write stupid stuff. No one takes any of it seriously. The DA will. So will the jury. Who are these other people you were talking to? Diablo is Floyd. Floyd? He's the idiot you hang out with tagging? I told you to stay away from Floyd. I have, I swear. I haven't seen Floyd for months. Why didn't you mention Floyd before? Because he's my friend. I didn't want to be a snitch. Floyd's a bad kid. He's violent. The cops should have arrested Floyd for killing William. Not Colin. We'll check him out. But who's the other kid? MFD. I don't know. He posted a few times, but... He's the one that started writing about William, not me. I was just going along with him. I knew you weren't telling me something. God, I hate that. Why didn't you tell me Jack hid this? There was no need. Legally, it never happened. Until he brought it to me and I had to test it. You tested it? Why? He didn't have to do that. Jack needed to know. So did I. Was the hammer clean? It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Dr. Shaw told me there were no blood traces and it didn't fit the wounds or the nail indentations. Good. I hope that convinces you. Next time you've got information on our case, tell a friend. I don't like being kept in the dark. We ran the trace you asked for on Colin's webpage. You are not going to believe who MFD is. We've got a list of every internet protocol address that visited Colin's site. You can't view a website without leaving yours behind. And this IPA has a local governmental prefix. Because it was the LAPD. They tricked Colin into confessing, or at least making incriminating statements about the case. There were news reports that the cops tried to do the same thing in the Duke rape case. Can we get a statement suppressed? No, because the police didn't coerce him into saying anything. Inviting Colin to talk about the case is legal. What he wrote is admissible at trial. So, we can't blame the murder on MFD. Let's hope we can still blame it on Floyd. Floyd Ames, 18, Colin's friend. The victim, William Dodson, bullied Floyd worse than Colin. Great. That means Floyd had a motive to kill William. I don't like his look. He's a bigger looking freak than Colin. Plus, Floyd's violent. He was sent to juvie for assault, vandalism, and cruelty to animals. When Colin got arrested for spray painting pentagrams, Floyd was with him, but got away. Do we know if the police ever looked at Floyd? He's a better suspect than Colin. They won't tell us if he was ever a suspect. They don't have to. Neither does Floyd. Fine. Nothing says we can't tell the jury about Floyd. We'll tell them he could have done this. We'll win with reasonable doubt. You're sure? They both had the same motive. They both talked about killing William. If we say Floyd did it, the DA's just gonna say that Colin and Floyd killed William together. Why hasn't the DA already said it? Why hasn't Keller offered one of them a deal to testify against the other? How many people does it take to crucify someone? <laughs> Is that a joke? No, a question. Get our expert, Dr. Shaw, and find out. The victim's tox report shows William Dodson was very drunk when he died. If he was drunk, it would have been easy to overpower him. Get ahead of me, Alden. Tom's gonna realize you know this stuff better than I do. The killer only needed one strike to kill him. He was hit in the side of the head, which means he must have been turning to defend himself. 
Sorry. It's okay. Anyway, it took me a while to figure out how the killer got the cross and the body up. Don't have a lot of experience with crucifixions. It's an incredibly rare crime. But forensics always comes down to one overlooked thing. You just need patience and focus to find it. How about these marks in the dirt? Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind. Look, you see those ropes? He could have used any one of them. The killer nailed dots into the cross. He dug his post hole. Tied one end of the rope to the top of the cross. Tossed the other end over a beam for leverage. So one person could have done it alone. Mm -hmm. Floyd. Or Colin. He was a travel scout. They took his manuals in the search. They used ropes in the travel scouts. I just served a subpoena at Cedars for Floyd's medical records. William Dodson broke Floyd's jaw and cheekbone in a fight two months ago. Floyd was at the hospital at the time of the murder, having facial reconstructive surgery. So that's it. Floyd is out as a suspect. That leaves Colin all alone. The reason Keller never offered anybody a deal is because he thinks Colin did this by himself, and we just proved it. Big news in the Topanga Canyon crucifixion case. Famed FBI profiler Donald Payne will now testify for the prosecution. Agent Payne brings years of experience solving ritualistic murders with the Behavioral Analysis Unit at Quantico. I'm thrilled to work with him. DAs like Keller hate asking for federal help. He had no choice. Whatever he was hoping to find at the clock's house during the search wasn't there. So he had to bring in relief. And juries love profilers. Criminal profiling isn't science. It's stereotyping dressed up as science. You could file a motion to try to exclude the profiler's testimony. You can try, but it probably won't work. California law is so pro-prosecution, it practically requires courts to let profiling testimony in. Then let me cross-examine the profiler. I know how to take this guy out and kill her with him. We tested it. It's clean. It's not the murder weapon. Thank you. The DA has no physical evidence tying Colin to the crucifixion itself. But the police found this in Colin's room. A giant maze of crucifixes. Blood dripping from the bodies like rain. Hundreds of them. Worthy victims all. Dev always let him read whatever he wanted. I remember that book. Colin used to talk about it all the time. I mean, it gave him nightmares. That's when he started painting those bloody crosses. Look, there's a big difference between having nightmares about this and reenacting it. Right? The profiler is going to say, this book gave you the idea to commit this crime. That's what they do. Yes, I read this book when I was like 12. But I don't do things because I read them in a book. But this did affect you, Colin. It gave you nightmares. Oh, not like the ones that I'm having now. They can't convict me for what I read and think, can they? Colin's statement on the web hurt us, and we lost our motion to exclude the profiler. We expected to. Now we have an issue for appeal. Not that we're going to need to appeal. I just wanted you to know because you have to be ready. We're going to call you as character witnesses to refute the profiler. Why? I mean, do you really think hearing from me is going to help? We don't have a lot of choices here. We can't point the finger at Floyd. He has an alibi. Oh, nice poker face, Jack. Good thing there's no press here. We can't put you on the stand if you're going to go unglued. Maybe that's for the best. I don't know what I'd say. I mean, don't ask me to do this. Don't ask you. He's your son. Say he didn't do this. You won't do it? Can we have the room for a minute? Trials are hard on everyone. Don't make excuses for Jack. He's been like this for years. 
Even before the trial? We always fought about how to raise Colin. Jack thinks I'm too soft. I think Jack's intolerant, judgmental, cruel even. And lately it's gotten even worse. Jack's obsessed with riding the ship before Colin goes away to college. What does that mean? Bullies like William, the, the bad influences like Floyd. It drove Jack crazy that Colin wouldn't stand up for himself. Jack says he's weak. Sometimes he gets so frustrated over Colin, he gets crazy, yelling. There were times I was afraid he'd hurt Colin. Jack's a fixer, but he couldn't fix Colin. And it's killing him. You insane? You think Dad is the killer? I'm just saying maybe. Jack did tell us he hated Dawson for bullying his son. Plus, the spray paint cans were found in Jack's car. Jack's strong enough to have done it, and he didn't have a broken arm like Colin. And then there's this. We found a postal digger in the inventory. Jack's a landscape architect. He kept it locked in his shed with the rest of his landscaping tools. Colin didn't have a key. The killer had to dig a hole for the cross somehow, and this post hole digger might explain those gouges you found in the dirt, Tom. But why spray the pentagrams? Was he trying to frame Colin? No, I think he was trying to frame Floyd. Floyd and Colin both tagged pentagrams, and Jack hated Floyd for being a bad influence on his son. We're thinking that Jack tried to kill William and get rid of Floyd at the same time by framing Floyd for it, and now he can't tell us because it got out of hand. I don't buy it. Jack's upset about Colin, but he's no killer. And plus, Deb told us Jack was out of town. Yeah, working, which sounds like a pretty soft alibi to me. There's a problem. We represent the whole family. That means we can't point the finger at Jack even if he is guilty. We can't incriminate our own client. Colin is the one that's wild. We have to do the right thing for him. We need to at least look into whether Jack did it. Do it. Fast. Trial starts tomorrow. If the evidence points to Jack, then we blame Jack. Are you willing to go after the father to save the son? Honor, at this time the prosecution calls its first witness, FBI agent Donald Payne. Objection, Your Honor. Move that this witness be excluded as unfairly prejudicial. Mr. Nicholson, I've already denied your in limine motion to exclude this evidence. Your motion is denied. Don't raise it again. God, I hate making objections. I know I'm going to lose. Tactical objections are part of the game. Now the jury knows to take the profiler with a grain of salt. Jack Clark's not the killer. Are you sure? You sound disappointed. I am. For Colin's sake. Jack used his Amex to pay for dinner in Fresno at 11 p.m. He couldn't have gotten back and done the crime in time. I'll go tell Tom. No, don't. Why not? If Tom thinks Jack did it, he'll be more sure that Colin's innocent. He'll do a better job. According to your profile, the killer was most likely young. Statistically, most ritualistic killers are younger. They're also smart, but impressionable. Often they're obsessed with death imagery and religious themes. Does Colin Clark fit your profile of the killer in this case? Yes. He's very smart, but unpopular, lonely, which he resents. He grew up with an inchoate, confused religious identity. His crucifixion paintings and pentagrams were his role-playing. Sadly, he turned his fantasies of death into reality. Thank you, Agent. No further questions. You describe Colin as young, immature, and into dark fantasy role-playing. That's right. So when the police tricked him into talking about this case on the internet, he was young and impressionable enough to fall into their trap. Objection. Your Honor, Mr. Keller has proffered this witness as an expert. The objection is overruled. I suppose your client was vulnerable to be tricked, yes. So what he told the police could have been just fantasy role playing and not a confession. That is possible. You said Colin fits the profile perfectly, right? Yes. Everything fits. His connection to his grandparents, his love of sports, his artistic talent. Well. Well? Did you leave those things out because they didn't fit your profile? I didn't think they were as relevant as the death-themed movies and books he owned. Like Silence of the Lambs, Seven, Saw. Were you surprised to find these movies in Colin's room? No. They're exactly what I'd expect to find in the home of someone capable of having bludgeoned and crucified William Dotson. 
That's funny, because we subpoenaed Mr. Keller's rental activity from Netflix. And he has borrowed all of these movies in the past year. I saw Dr. Shaw's new crime recreation. It could be good to use. The jury needs to see how hard it would have been for Colin to raise the cross with a broken arm. When were you going to tell me about Jack's alibi? I had to ask Betsy. I didn't think you needed to know. I'm trying the case. I did what I thought was best for Colin. And for you. Because I can't defend clients if they're guilty? Some lawyers are better in certain situations. That's a fact. You haven't liked Colin from the beginning. I was protecting you. Like how you didn't tell me about the hammer. Whatever I think about Colin hasn't affected the job I am doing or the case that I'm trying. I just wanted to make sure it wouldn't. Focus. They're trying to take your son away from you, whether you believe him I or not. I do believe him. I'll never forgive myself for having that hammer tested. I never should have doubted him. All his life, I've been worried that people judge him by the way he looks. And I was right. You hear that profiler? Then I was doing the same thing to my own son, wasn't I? He's my son. I'll do anything, anything to help him. Jack, that's all he wants. He was a sweet and gentle boy. He still is. Sometimes I don't like how he dresses or what he listens to, but that's every father. He didn't do this. He couldn't. Thank you. No further questions. Jack is about to lose it, Keller can tell. Protect Jack any way you can. You love your son. I wouldn't lie for him. Easy. You're not supposed to say that until I say you love your son so you would do anything for him. Objection. Argumentative. Is the DA trying to be funny? I'll rephrase the question. No, I want a ruling on my objection. You're not the judge. Move on, Mr. Keller. Were you coached by the defense on how to testify here today? No one has to coach me on what to say about my son. I didn't ask you that. I asked you if you were coached. Objection. Asked and answered. Withdrawn. Withdrawn? Now, what is that? I, I want a ruling on my objection. Objection sustained. I'm going to try this again. Did the lawyers tell you what to say? No. But they took you to a media consultant, a mock jury. What was that for? Objection. Asked and answered, argumentative, and seeks to violate the attorney-client privilege. They told me to tell the truth. Stop talking. Let the witness answer. They didn't tell me what to say. There is no question We're pending. We're coaching him. My son didn't do this. And you know this how. You weren't even there that day. Yes, I was. I was there. I know he didn't do it because I did it. I killed that boy. You killed him. Wow. Interesting. Because we have receipts proving you were in Fresno when that boy was killed. You love your son. You do anything to help him even take the blame for his crime. No objections? I guess not. Nothing further. The father's pathetic effort to help his son may end up convicting him. May end up convicting him? It may not be fatal. Half the jury has kids. They'll understand what you were trying to do. Lying is lying. Jurors hate lying. They'll think Jack lied because he knows Colin did it. He lied because he was scared, Mr. Trot. He's afraid of losing his son. Did you think they wouldn't check your travel? Keller's not that stupid. Stop it! Leave him alone. He was trying to help. Dad, it's okay. It's okay. I'm 
so sorry. Rock, I talked to you. Look, we've got to do something. The kid's innocent. No, you're sure why? Show me how a guy feels about his dad, and I'll tell you if he could be a cold-blooded killer. Anyone capable of crucifying someone wouldn't go to pieces over his dad trying to save him. It's about the jury didn't see it. We're going to have to come up with something else to show the jury. Is the demonstration ready? No, but it will be. It would have been very difficult for Colin to lift the weight of the cross and the victim with that broken arm of his. Hold on. Would a cross really go up straight like that? Actually, maybe not. I, I guess if the weight on the cross isn't perfectly balanced and the angle of your rope isn't going to be perfectly perpendicular, then uh, it'd go up turning. Nice job, Doc. Yeah? Yeah. I'd like the jury to note that the cross is rotating slightly to the left. Now, why is that, Doctor? Well, even though the killer is walking straight out and pulling straight down, the rope is over his left shoulder, so that creates a slight imbalance. And after a cross has been raised, is there any way to tell exactly how it was pulled into position? Yes. By examining the dirt evidence in the post hole. If the wood was twisted to the left, as we just saw in the reenactment, you can see that creates a corkscrew pattern of gouges in the dirt. Now, please note the counterclockwise direction. If the killer had raised the cross over his right shoulder, then the cross would have twisted to the right, and the gouges would corkscrew in a clockwise direction instead. So how did the killer pull the cross into position? The killer pulled the cross over his left shoulder. As you can see, that's what the dirt evidence at the crime scene shows. And why is that significant? Colin broke his left arm two months ago, falling down a stairwell. As you can see, raising the cross requires 380 pounds force. Now, I can say to a medical certainty that that kind of pressure would have broken Colin's arm again. But Colin's arm was fine. Could Colin Clark have pulled this cross into position as the DA contends? In my opinion, no. You're too hard on yourself. You did a great job. You always feel this way before a verdict, Tom. Don't worry. They're not looking at me. They don't like to look at anybody right now. They're afraid of tipping the answer. You know that. What did the judge say? Did you hear? The clerk will record the verdict. On the single count of murder in the first degree, we, the jury, find the defendant, Colin Clark, guilty. Don't say anything to the press. We'll get back to see you as soon as they let us. We've got issues to appeal. Remember, we've got issues to appeal. Eddie Lazarus has agreed to handle the appeal. I won't handle the appeal. You're a trial lawyer. 
not an appellate lawyer. And he's the best appellate lawyer in the country. Eddie Lazarus is expensive. The Clarks can't afford him. I'll pay. I figured we'd all chip in. CNN is downstairs. I want to talk to you about the case. Never hide from the press, Tom, especially after a loss. Lean into it. Let them know you're not done. I didn't believe him, Ron. Then I did. And then it was too late. What have I done? You did your job, Tom. You did it well. We're trial lawyers for the defense. Sometimes we lose. Sometimes the jury gets it wrong. It's part of the game. Either get over it or get out of it.